And joining us now to give us his take on America's energy potential is Chris Faulkner, the CEO of Breitling Energy Companies, an American petroleum and natural gas developer. Chris, welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you for joining you. us. Thank you. It's a busy trip for you. So it is busy, yes. Time. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to get your thoughts. Uh, sure. The U.S. certainly expanding rapidly when it comes to energy production. For sure. A lot of people potentially putting it ahead of even the likes of Saudi Arabia. Sure. Just what kind of potential does the U.S. have when it comes to oil and gas reserves? Well, I mean, as you mentioned in the opening piece, fracking has completely changed the energy landscape in America. We were going to be a huge, you know, importer of Qatari gas in 2005. That's now the forecast to zero because of this natural gas glut that we have from shale. And now you look at production in America, 7.4 million barrels of oil a day. That's up 20% from just one year ago. So Saudi's at 10 and a half, let's say. So if we stay on the pace that we're at, we could, we could surpass Saudi Arabia as the biggest oil producer in the world by 2017, 2018 at this pace. Now, keep in mind, we're still using 13 million barrels a day ourselves consumption-wise. So there's not a huge net or delta to export yet. But if we continue down this road, we could be a big net export. So potentially you could overtake Saudi, but how long do you think that would be reasonable for? A couple of years, 10 years? Well, you know, if you look at Saudi, I think that their production beyond 2020 begins to increase again as new, as new wells are drilled and more production and more reserves are found. So I think it might be short-lived. Uh, some period of time there where they will surpass us yet again, but at least for some small amount of time, we might hold that flag for, for a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. So I guess looking at, at the expansion, or it was, mm -hmm. uh, for example, with the natural gas you referred to, is that entirely down to fracking? How crucial is the fracking process to uh, the U.S.'s energy expansion? I, I, I couldn't say that it's, it, there's nothing more critical than fracking. It's an instrumental key that's been used to unlock this treasure trove of natural gas and oil. Now, these were source basins for our conventional production, and we've always known they existed, but we never could, we never could produce uh, because they're too tight. So we started drilling sideways or horizontal, combining that with fracking, and that's unlocked all of these reserves. And so without that tool, then there is no more uh, oil production coming online in America because 95% of all the wells we drill every single month are fracked. So 1,900 wells a month, essentially every single one of them is fracked. I mean, huge opportunities when it comes to fracking, but there is some concern about the environmental sure. uh, effects of that. Do you feel that completely safe it is, uh, no problems, it is 100% safe? I think it's 100% safe, and I think the industry takes every precaution to protect drinking water. Now, if you were telling me, we're, let's go frack at 1,000 foot below the surface, where the aquifers are in the United States are pretty shallow because you don't want to, obviously, you don't, salt water is pretty deep. So <laughs> we're fracking 8,000, 10,000 feet below that. So you have almost two miles of earth setting between the aquifer, okay, which is protected by steel pipe. That's As we drill through the aquifer, we have to set steel pipe and casing. Then we drill the well, then we frack the well two miles beneath that. So I don't feel there's any connectivity between the fracking process and drinking water aquifers. But I mean, in terms of the studies, I know you've been, uh, fracking's been uh, taking place in the U.S. since the 40s, but sure. there's really only been comprehensive studies for a couple of years. Do we right. need more long-term studies before we really pursue that? Problem? You know, I, I will say two things. One, I think the EPA has spent two years uh, exhaustively looking at uh, wells that have been fracked, looking at water wells, taking readings around to make sure there's no contamination from chemical or flow back from the well, salt water, if you will. Uh, you know, I think they'll continue doing that. The current administration and the current president obviously is putting a lot of emphasis toward uh, renewable energy and, and everything he can do to make sure, you know, oil and gas is regulated even at an additional federal level. You know, we have all, each one of our states already regulates oil and gas, but now there's been guidance from the administration that they're going to actually, the EPA will step in and put more regulation on top of that. So I think as an industry, we expect to see federal re regulation around fracking. I don't know when it's going to come. My guess is sooner than later. I mean, looking at that regulation, I mean, it's something that people are expecting or are waiting for. Uh, right. It's supposed to come uh, shortly. What expectations do you have? What regulation is really needed right now? I mean, you had said it's 100% safe. So, what's, you know, what's I, I, don't, I, I think the states which have been governing oil and gas for the last 100 years in America knows best uh, for their citizens, their residents, their, you know, area, if you will, their land. I think that you will see the EPA putting out regulation on federally controlled lands, and they control a lot of land in the United States. Private citizens own a tremendous amount, but the government also owns a, a huge amount of, of land, so they can regulate federal lands, I think, more than they can a state or private lands. Do you, do you think then there isn't really a need for federal regulation? You know, I don't, I, what I'm afraid of is going to be duplicative, okay, because they're going to get the guidance from the states, take it to the federal level, and then lay something on top that's already being managed at the state level. So now we've got to two, two layers of regulation, adds more red tape, adds more cost, adds more time. So I don't think now is the time 
that we need to be putting on any undue regulation. And I think the industry is highly regulated already. So it's not that we're out there doing things unregulated and, and you know, cowboys on the land. But, you know, I think a lot of folks have the misnomer that it's not regulated. People don't realize that the states do manage that, that body of organization. So do you feel essentially that extra regulation, I guess extra red tape, some people would call it, is mm -hmm. that really holding the U.S. back when it comes to energy development? You know, I, I, would, I would be fearful that if we had more that it would. I think now it's, it's workable because, again, we're working with the states and, and in certain states as you see like Texas where we have an energy heritage it's a lot easier to get things done New York has banned fracking so California is now putting a fracking moratorium in place so some of the states are responding based upon I th think their individual viewpoints on what's going on California wants more time more information you know analysis paralysis if you will uh, <laughs> you know New York is has banned it for the for temporarily so you know that's a concern if more states went down that road obviously that locks off more area for us to develop in the United States yeah, it's funny that balance isn't it um, sure. finally what do you get your thoughts uh, in terms of export uh, capabilities of the US obviously we've really seen our natural gas mm -hmm. prices certainly drop off there exports are still limited and it's something that we've looked at in this part of the world sure. making sure that Saudi UAE can export the uh, the reserves and really make a lot of money off right. Right. It. But the U.S. is still a major uh, consumer rather than an exporter. Yeah, you know, our, our demand has come down from almost 18 million barrels a day pre the economic crash in 08. So we've gotten more fuel efficient cars on the roads. Our demand has come down. Still 13 million barrels a day is a lot of demand. Uh, you know, I would like to be able to capture the Delta to, to be able to self-sufficient our own needs. And then above and beyond that export, obviously natural gas needs to be exported immediately because there's 100 plus years of supply <laughs> and we're not utilizing it properly for, you know, for transportation or power generation. But as far as oil, I think oil will come second after natural gas. But right now, the United States has a ban on exports of crude oil. So it has to be refined in a distillate fuel. So you can refine it into diesel or, you know, jet fuel, and then you can export it. You cannot export raw crude. So that would have to change at a federal level before we could start exporting. Just quickly, we're almost out of time. Bring it back to the Middle East. Sure. Obviously, the shift in balance, you know, the U.S. is expected to be the, the largest uh, oil producer by 2020. Yep. How is that going to change things for the Middle East, in your opinion? You know, I think the Middle East has some concern that, you know, America is a huge importer of, of, uh, of Gulf oil and, and that, that may not be uh, the case forever and in the near term it may not be the case at all. I also think that there's some concern of us getting into the LNG game and, and exporting natural mm -hmm. gas and competing with, you know, a multitude of, uh, of Gulf region, uh, you know, states as far as, you know, moving gas out of the Middle East. The Middle East itself, though, in certain areas is starved for natural gas and Dubai being one of those. So, you know, I think the landscape is definitely changing. Um, you know, if you asked me 10 years ago, would, would America be uh, surpassing Saudi Arabia in, in oil production, I would have thought you were crazy. But in a short amount of time, we definitely have put that, that you know, reality is, is now, now part of the game. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mr. Paul, thank you so much for taking time out of your business. Thanks for having us. me. Yeah, appreciate it.